So, this week's Sedra is Sedra's Chukas. This week's Sedra is especially meaningful to me. While the start of the Sedra contains well-known episodes such as Moshe's hitting the rock, the end of the Sedra contains the stories of B'nai Yisrael's wars in what would be today's Jordan. These Pesukim are meaningful to me because from my study, I can see the mountains where the battles were fought. After fighting Sichon, the Pesukim record the following episode. Then Moshe sent the spies to spy out Yazer, and they captured its dependencies and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. They marched on and went up the road to Bashan, and King Og of Bashan, with all his people, came out to Edri to engage them in battle. God said to Moshe, Do not fear him, for I have given him and all his people and his land into your hand. You shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites who lived in Cheshbon. They defeated him and his sons and all his people until no remnant was left of him, and they took possession of his country. The Ramban explained that Og gathered his troops to Edri, which is at the tip of his border, and the Jewish people could have veered away from him as they veered away from Esau back in the day. But God said to him, Do not fear him. Og was the king of an area out of Bnei Israel's path. There was no reason for him to start up with the Jewish people. Moshe was initially fearful to go to war with him. Our, so, so, excuse me, our scholars explained Moshe's initial fear. In his commentary, Rashi explained that God said not to fear Og because Moshe feared fighting Og because the merit of Avram, who Og had been associated, would be an advocate for Og. King Og had escaped from Rephaim, whom Chadalomer and his allies had defeated in Ashtarot Karnaim in the Battle of the Four and Five Kings. He had informed Avram that Lot had been taken captive. The Chizkuni, normally a defender of Rashi's teachings, objected to this comment of Rashi's. The Chizkuni wrote, Rashi's explanation seems highly unlikely, as Rashi himself explains elsewhere that Og was far from having noble intentions. Og wished Avram dead, so that he could go ahead and marry Sarah. We therefore must look for a different reason why Moshe would have feared Og. Moshe was concerned that if Og had survived so long, at that point, four to five hundred years, God had a mission in mind that Og must fulfill, and maybe that mission has not been fulfilled. Only after God had set Moshe's mind at ease did Moshe cease worrying about the outcome of the military encounter that was imminent. It was only after God reassured him that his mind was set to rest about the imminent mil military encounter involving such a giant. The incident Rashi and the Cheskuni were referring to was recorded in Sefer Barishas. They also took Lot, the son of Avram's brother, the Pasuk says, and his possessions, and departed, for he had settled in Sodom. A fugitive brought the news to Avram, the Hebrew, who was dwelling with Mamre, the Amorite, kinsman of Eshkol and Aner, these being Avram's allies. When Avram heard that his relative, Lot, had been taken captive, he gathered his followers, born into his household, numbering 318 people, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. The phrase, the one who had escaped Chadolomer's army arrived, according to Rashi's commentary, was the man who later on became Og, king of Bashan, who had made a name for himself by having survived Noah's flood. He lived so long that eventually, in this week's Parsha, Moshe killed him. He was not interested in saving Avram, but intended to marry Sarah after Avram would have been killed in war. God retaliated by paying him back in kind. God granted him a long life for warning Avram on the one hand, but God also foiled his design, Avram becoming victorious and Sarah predeceasing Avram. He was sure to live long millions of Avram's descendants before himself being killed by one of them. Granted, if this was a fact, Moshe had reason to fear him, and that is why God told him not to be afraid of him. The battle of Og against Moshe and the Jewish people is so meaningful to me because of its message. King Og was an anti-Semite who schemed to kill Avram. God foiled his plans and punished Og in a most torturous manner. God didn't kill him in a painful way, but rather he made him live hundreds of years and watch as Avram's descendants survived and thrived. Right at his best, King Og was defeated and killed by the very Jews he tried to stop at their seminal moment. Although I'm not one to decipher God's plans, I feel that thousands of years later, the Jewish people's enemies are again forced to watch as we succeed. This is what I see from my porch and my study, from the battlefields of Og and Moshe to the success of the Jewish people today. Shabbat Shalom.